If you've ever played Roblox, uh, then I know for a fact that there was at least one moment where you experienced an immense lag spike. If not, the game just crashed. And this happens in Roblox Studio as well, right? So this, this is literally how Roblox games are made, right? And yet, it's entirely possible to crash the game here as well, which makes sense because, you know, Studio is meant to be like a replica of, of Roblox games. But that just caused me to wonder, how many ways are there to crash Roblox? Now, technically, there are infinite ways, right? Because, you know, there's actually a ton of things that you could keep on doing to, you know, just repetitively crash your Roblox game. However, after years and years of hard work and research, I've managed to boil it down to four main things. So the very first thing we need to think about is like, why do games crash or experience lag spikes, right? Usually, I mean, not usually, basically all the time, it's just because there's too much going on in the game for the game to handle, right? Be that because of a script or, you know, just a bunch of like, you know, parts being rendered or whatever, right? But yeah, it all just comes down to like the game feeling overwhelmed and just crashing on you, right? Now, the very first, very first way to crash a Roblox game is to do a while true loop, okay? Simply put, the issue with a while true loop, specifically like this, like exactly like this, is that if you don't add a wait, right? So, so I, if I just make it wait two seconds, right? It's basically just gonna loop, wait for two seconds, and then loop again. That's fine, right? The issue here, though, is that if you're not doing any waiting, this is the first time I've seen it bug out this badly, bro. More, the more and more I see this this feature, I'm okay. I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about it, bro. It doesn't deserve my attention, okay? But like I was saying, you know, before I was rudely interrupted by the AI code assist. The issue here is that if we're not waiting, it's gonna just loop forever. But it can't loop forever, right? You can't do something forever or an infinite amount of times, at least, you know, in the scripting world, because it just doesn't, it can't do that, right? So if I do a while true loop and I play the game, it's not gonna let me, you know, my, my cursor is becoming, my cursor is now spinning and soon it's gonna give me an error, basically saying something timed out, yeah, script timeout. So Roblox is smart. It's actually gonna shut down the script if it takes too long to respond, right? Because here it's like, it's trying to basically infinitely do something. And obviously, you know, we can't really do that. So it just doesn't let it. But now you might be saying, this isn't really crashing a game though, right? Like, okay, fine. You know, it took a bit, a little longer to actually, you know, like, like, okay, fine. It took a little longer to load into the game, but I'm here, right? So Roblox has a system in place to prevent this from crashing the game. To that I say, fair enough. Time to move on to the second thing, which is item spam, okay? Simply put, if I do a loop again, so I'll do another, I'll just, I'll just make it wait, okay? Just so we don't actually crash the game this time, okay? So while task.wait, which is the smallest amount of time we can wait, just make a part, instance.new part, and then just parent it to the workspace, okay? And then if I start running the game right now, there we go, look at that. And as I move around, you, you just notice how laggy it gets, right? Obviously, you know, this might be, this might seem obvious to you, like, okay, yeah, duh, obviously, you know, when you, when you add a lot of items, the game ends up lagging out or eventually crashing. However, an interesting thing to note, right, is that when we do it on the server, right, and so if I look away right now, even though I'm not looking at the items, it's still lagging me out, right? So even though the items technically aren't being rendered for me because I'm not looking at them, they're still lagging me out, right? Because that's how the server works. The server renders everything even when you don't look at it. However, if I were to run the game right now as a player, right? So right now, yeah, there we go. It's me. You know, I'll just let the parts stock up for a bit. All right. So the parts have, you know, um, been created. They're, they're going backwards now, which is insane. So something to note on the client, right, is that basically, right, e even if I look away, you know, my camera is still kind of kind of bad. But the thing here is that with the client, the way it works is that it is somewhat based on distance. So right now, right, I'm actually like, okay, I'm lagging out, but it's fairly okay, right? You may notice that all of the lighting details are gone now. Otherwise, it, it would break, right? So to, to save the client from crashing, it's like trying to take away detail. You'll notice that the moment I try and walk into the parts, yeah, it just becomes awful. Look at that. L look, look at how glitchy everything becomes the moment I step foot into this abyss, okay? But when I leave, it's still laggy. It's still laggy as hell, don't get me wrong, but it's a bit better, right? I don't even know why I, why I showed you all of that, right? Point is, a bunch of items aren't good. However, you might be asking right now, but that isn't quite crashing, is it, right? And to that I say, you're right, so let's make a fire, okay? And then let's parent it to the spawn location. And let's set the size to be, we'll set it to 30, okay? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> there we go. This is what I'm talking about, okay? Not even 10 seconds in, and the client is having a little bit of struggle. Now, the moment I actually look away from this, look at this. The moment I look away, you know, my, my shiny golden headphones come back, which, by the way, buy my course, bro. These cost me <laughs> $300 to get. And look, the moment I actually look into the fire again, oh, look at that. Bro, look at, look at my headphones, right? 
They're gonna lose their detail. Look at that. My headphones, the shine is gone. Oh, that is so sad. But then the moment I look away, all of it comes back. So you can see already how like, if you just add more scripts, right? Or if you just let the items, you know, keep on adding up for longer, you could crash a game, right? Or at the very least, like some guy playing on like an iPhone 5 still, right? You probably could crash his game. However, now what I want to tell you is Roblox can't quite handle expensive calculations, right? What I mean by expensive, right? For example, let's say we take a calculation. Let's say I want to print out 1 plus 2, okay? Like so. This is a calculation, okay? If I play this right now, it has zero issue absolutely zero issue actually running this right and the reason it has zero issue is because this is a cheap calculation because in when we're talking about scripting expensive and cheap doesn't mean money right i mean it, it kind of does for the, the the hardware i guess whatever the idea here is that when i say something is cheap it just means that it takes up very little um like effort to calculate right but then there are some things which take up a lot more effort to calculate so then imagine if we're basically trying to calculate something that's very expensive right and we're trying to calculate it very fast obviously Obviously, that's going to start causing lag, okay? Now, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that one of the most expensive calculations in Roblox is trying to get the square root of something, right? So math, square root, like so. Yeah, so it returns the square root of whatever is inside of its brackets, right? So literally, if I just say like 10 or something, right? It's not going to crash the game necessarily, but did you did you notice how like when I logged in or, you know, when I, when I played the game for the first time, it took a bit longer to get into, right? A little bit longer. And you, you notice how like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but the movie movement here does feel a little slower right now you might be saying okay but you know that's not game crashing okay you know what you know what let me show you this okay four i equals one nine 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 okay okay there we go there we go we're trying this now and what i'll do is i'll say print math square root i okay same thing actually no you know what i'll do you know what i'll do before even doing that i'll just say print i plus one because you know because i just added a loop so you might be saying oh but the game is gonna crash not because of the math square root but because you're doing it in a loop right let's try okay now obviously because i'm doing it in in, in, in the big loop obviously it's gonna you know not handle it as well but like uh, let me just show you let me just show you four i equals one nine 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 okay there, there's your loop okay and you know what you know what i'll do print math square root i okay so basically task dot weight we're gonna loop 999 times 999 we're gonna get the square root of the number we're looping through and you know what's gonna happen let me play the game right now okay okay you know what the, the player's somewhat walking okay no he's not even walking he's just okay there we go there we go i press the key 10 seconds later he's walking beautiful the sound is still playing okay oh he's walking in i i haven't even pressed the keyboard and you know what you know what you might be saying right now he's still moving okay i don't like that i want this guy dead um uh, maybe maybe 999 was a bit bit too little okay let's add one more nine one more nine and let's see what happens yep there we go as you can see 999 constantly okay the player is somewhat yeah okay see at this point it's like sure it technically hasn't crashed yet but bro it's like you're not playing a game like this right you know i'm just saying you know if you want some like harsh punishment in your game you know some you you cut you catch some player going out of bounds just make his client do the math make his client start looping through square roots and then this is going to be their gaming experience i might actually have to restart studio because this is not the, yeah i don't think this is gonna work all right so look we've gone through the wild true loops okay we've gone through the item spam we've gone through you know doing the bait calculations now it's time for the thing that will actually or okay you know what maybe it's not gonna crash your game entirely but you will see what i mean okay it's gonna do something very very similar what i'll do is i'll make a script okay very simple like so and how about this we're gonna loop through the players i guess we're gonna say for iv in game players get players okay so basically we're just gonna go through every single player and i'll actually i'll actually copy this right now i'll i'll put it into a while loop okay while task dot wait do and we're gonna do this okay what i want to do is i want to get the player's character so i'll say if not v dot character then continue end meaning if the player doesn't have a character then we're just going to continue to the next player so we're going to skip the current one okay and what i want to do is i just want to keep on exponentially teleporting the player up okay so first i want to teleport them up by a little bit but then every single time we loop i want to increase that number or no i want to multiply that number by two right so we can say like local up distance 0 0.0001 like so this is going to be our up distance okay and so what we're going to do is we're going to say local root is equal to v dot character wait for child humanoid root parts okay and then we're just going to say root not rotation curve keeper what am i doing <laughs> root position okay so we're going to basically take the position of the humanoid root part and we're going to plus equals 
we're going to add on a vector 3.new, 0, 0, 0. But instead, this is the y-axis. This is the up and down, right? So this is what we're going to actually increase. And we'll just say up distance, okay? So basically, we're going to increase the player's vertical distance, meaning how high they're going, by up distance, which right now is an insanely small number, okay? But right after that, we're just going to say up distance times equals 2. So we're just going to multiply up distance by 2. And hopefully, as you can see, that's going to start ramping up real quick, okay? So let's try it. Oh, that's... You know what? Maybe that was a little... Maybe that maybe that was a little bit too quick. Okay, let's do task.wade 0.1. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. Gameplay paused. Look at that. This isn't edited, by the way. This is this is Roblox crashing. But, you know, hopefully that gave you a couple ideas on how to actually, you know, stop Roblox from functioning. Another thing I'll do, actually, why don't we just mix all of these combined? Okay, why, why don't I just mix everything that we just did? Okay, so um, maybe not the wild true loop, because that just stops everything from happening but you know the the item particle spam the big numbers the far distances right we could literally just do all of that so you know what i'm gonna do you know what i'm gonna do we're gonna do the same task thought wait okay I'm, I'm actually gonna do all of the same thing here right but just instead of multiplying it by um two i'm, I'm gonna multiply it by 1.1 okay like so i'm gonna multiply it by 1.1 all right so we're gonna do this and the other thing, you know, on top of actually, you know, making the player go up, I'm just going to spawn a new part. Instance.new part, I'm going to parent it to the um, the workspace, right? Who cares? I'll actually make it a variable. I'll say local new part is equal to instance.new part workspace. And I'll set its position to be equal to the root position. Okay, very simple. And then what I'll do is I'll say instance.new fire and then we'll set it equal to or no we'll set the parent equal to new parts okay and then i'll set the fire size to be equal to 30 okay very simple and i just realized that i actually did this incorrectly so let me <laughs> let me re really quickly change that new part dot position is equal to root dot position there we go and so what i'll do is actually i'll make a folder okay i'll make a new folder in the workspace and then just i'll instead of parenting the part to the workspace I'll parent it to the folder, okay? And the reason I'm doing this, by the way, is because then <laughs> what we can do is we can make a script inside of the folder, right? And then we could say, we could, we could do another while task dot wait every one second. Let's do every one second, okay? And what I'll do is I'll say local parts is equal to script dot parent get children, right? So the folder get children, right? And what I'll do is I'll just loop through all of the parts. So for IV in parts do if not V is a base part then continue end right because we don't want to loop through the script however if it is a part what we're going to do is we're just going to say print um v no we're, we're going to use math.square root and we're just going to print some number we're going to say math v dot transparency why not okay so basically what we're doing here is i'm increasing you know the i'm going to move the, the character up okay um every time we move them up i'm going to ba basically create a part at their exact position i'm going to put fire to the part with a size 30 I'm going to put that part inside of this folder and then inside of the folder there's a, there's a script which basically every second it loops through all of the parts and it prints the square root of their transparency meaning the more parts the more times it does the square root the more times it lags the more times we go up etc etc so now it's time for the final lag test all right immediately not doing too well okay i can't even move because my character is slowly being uh no but we are going up we are going up look at that that's so fire actually look at that <laughs> oh that's amazing gameplay paused i can see that yeah oh look at that the square the, the square root is struggling yeah i think everything is like just reaching its limit at this point i don't think i don't think any of this is actually working out the square root is at five thousand. we are still not at the, the peak how far are we i don't even want to check the, the, the parts folder is likely yeah it's it's insanely populated by parts and eventually what's gonna happen is i'll reach the border and then we'll just explode as usual okay okay you know what actually real quick because this is taking so long i'll just i'll just increase up distance by two as as, as last time okay up distance by two there we go there we go there goes our character look at him go oh that's so oh that's so nice the the, the thing that i'm wondering is is the character even going up there we go okay the character is now done for and now he's free from all burden so there you go i've literally created hell for my character and yep there we go the parts are one by one falling that's amazing and there's one right there too that's great so yeah you know next time you want to crash a roblox game for some reason right just do this okay yeah literally it's very easy right you just gotta take your character flung them a million studs out spawn a part uh, set the part on fire perform a math dot square root calculation on the on the parts transparency and there you go you're good right you basically have you know crash your game the reason i haven't actually crashed my game right by the way is because if i did all that it would do is it would just kick me out of roblox studio okay which 
I'm not a big fan of wanting to like I'm not a big fan of having to like constantly close and reopen studio right but you can see like you're you're a smart person right you can basically tell that like okay if you wanted to crash someone just make a script that spawns in a bunch of parts and then just duplicate that script 50 times we actually could do is you could actually make another script which duplicates that script so you can have a script which constantly summons new parts and then you can have another script which constantly clones the script that spawns new parts and then you could have another script which clones the other script and yeah and there we go you can just make an exponential lag machine why would you do this again i don't know to each their own but you know the fact is you can and that's pretty cool and we're back to basics thank you for watching